The Democratic National Convention's first night uh, kicked off last night, and that was, you get the date out, July 25th, today's July 26th. I'm doing it the following morning, uh, my reaction to it and the speeches that were there. You know, one thing that really caught me off guard was uh, Joe Kennedy III's presence. He is the grandson of Robert Kennedy. I think I knew about him coming there or being in attendance there about a day before. But it still surprised me, though, that he came. And I was a little disappointed he didn't actually give really a speech. It was just introducing someone else. Mm. But, you know, the Democrats made a good choice to uh, utilize its lesser-known members of its party. And, you know, certainly um, I think the best speech might have been Michelle Obama's. Um, though Hannity pointed out something really, really true, even though... Again, I say this as someone who's just checking the facts, you know, not against Michelle Obama. She's probably my second or third favorite first lady after uh, Jacqueline Kennedy. But the point that he made was that when Obama ran the first time or during his initial presidential campaign, she said something along the lines of, for the first time ever in my adult life, I'm proud of my country. Um... And, you know, that's something she can't deny. And his whole point in what, in, you know, bringing that up is that, you know, you feel as if because she's stated, she said during her speech, don't let anybody tell you that America isn't, you know, the greatest country in the world and it's got a whole bunch of problems. But, you know, her thing is that the country's great, but before this you were saying it wasn't or that it wasn't anything you'd be proud of. Um, you know, and, and it makes sense because you obviously want to, support your husband, his changes, his policies, so she can't, it, it's such a, I, I get it at the same time, it's just like when people talk, oh, she supports Clinton, she supports her, what do you expect, she's, you know, first lady at the time Clinton's running, and they're of the same party, so why not, it only makes sense, um, I, I mean, it's just, you know, I, I couldn't see them going any other route than the one they did last night, Sanders, I feel really bad for, because, that, that uh, la yesterday morning he was trying to calm his supporters, didn't really work. Later that day he was trying to calm them during the convention itself, it barely worked. Just he's had really minimal success, and it's not his fault. Or you, know, you can't, one person, one man cannot control a group of people, um, you know, really ever entirely, every single time. And I'm just saying that as someone who has observed mannerisms from these candidates before and knows that things really don't work out um, that way unless you guys you have some kind of mind control on it. it you know I'm saying that kind of jokingly here but you just you can't expect all of these different people to be affected by what he says or what he does and you also have to remember that it's been months and months of them going back and forth all of a sudden for him to endorse her, it just, it, it doesn't, it can't, it, it won't, it won't, uh, ring. Um, I also love how this convention t currently is turning out to basically be the exact same thing as the Republican convention, where they tout the, you know, candidate, the nominee so much, in almost every single speech. I just start rolling my eyes because after a while it feels as if you're hearing the same exact message, but with a different voice. And sometimes there, the voices start sounding alike, too. So, you know, that was just icing on the cake. The one thing they did have, um, and it's really on the part of both uh, Warren, or Warren, however you pronounce her last name. <laughs> People always want to correct me on that. Well, actually, it's just one person, but whatever. Sanders and, and her, um, they both actually spoke about policy, something that everyone else seemed to be missing. And, you know, I liked how really for the majority of their speeches they were trying to address important issues the problem with their speeches however and it's not really on the part of their speeches but on the part of where they were given they're giving that the dnc the democratic national convention a place where you know they're trying to unify whatever but the unification doesn't work when most of us know that clinton won't she just she will not take to the standards that sanders had during his campaigns, you know, she's trying to get the supporters, but she's not trying to do any of the things he sought to do. I mean, he said they were similar in his speech, Sanders, uh, he stated that, 
I, I'd beg to differ. I see no similarity in, in their um, their brand other than, oh, we're both from the Democratic Party. And all, all I, every time I look at her, I just think of how many donors has she been bought by? How many more times is she going to flip her position? How many more times is, or am I going to see black people tell me about how great she is and how Trump is horrible? When in reality, they some of them, some of these uh, African Americans agree more with him than her, but they, you know, they... They have to vote for the Democrats because they're a Democrat because their grandfather was a Democrat. Back when, you know, Democrats actually did something for blacks. And that wasn't even the whole party. That was just a few members, but still. You know, it's like every time I think about her support from African Americans, all I can think about is just all, you know, they put, the guy said to himself, one of the, um, you know, people that was speaking, I forget what his name was. He's one of the lesser known individuals. Uh, this is the party of JFK and and he starts going down the list, and then he, you know, gets to Clinton. And all I can think to myself is, how, how could you even count those two together? How, you know, where in the world, what, what alternate universe? And it's not even Bill Clinton; it's her. You know, I, I, I'll give Bill Clinton credit where it needs to be. Um, but again, she's been just awful in my eyes since uh, she got out of the White House. And I even had one person come on one of my videos and start defending her, and I just sat there and rolled my eyes and typed away and said, "This is pointless." Like every time somebody goes back and forth to me about her, I just keep thinking to myself, this, "You know, they're not, you're not going to change." Well, half the time, if I ask um, an African American why they support her, they can't even give a reason. And I tell you know, so instead, I'll tell them my reasons, like, like I did last night with another person. All they could tell me was that, "Oh, what you said was kind of mean." They didn't go against one thing I said because they knew it was true. Saying they liked her, and I asked her why. So I can't give her a reason. It's okay. Well, then you 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 don't you know. Here's my reasons. So yeah, that that's my view on her. You know, like it's kind of inserted into this video. But again, I don't care. I, I, I'm just I'm not like I can't watch this stuff without hurling when they talk about how good she is. I don't you know. Guy took come up here talking about. I it was Al Franken. I, I've known her for twenty a problem a quarter century. Okay, great. She, was she bad back then too? I mean, it just it doesn't matter. So thank you for watching. Um, please don't buy into the Clinton brand, the Hillary Clinton brand. I like that we can buy into the Bill Clinton brand. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you for watching. Have a good day.